What's up, Hard Cut Bully fam? We back with another live one. I had a question come to me this morning, man. What happens if you buy American Bully with too many flaws to breed? What do you do now? And I thought that's a real good question. Let's get into that. And I put a little bit of thought into this, and it looks, and it, what it comes out to be is, is regardless, you have two choices. Either keep the dog or rehome it. But either way, you have to get the dog spayed or neutered. If you're gonna to decide to rehome the dog, let's try to get a little bit more value in it. The first thing that you can do to get a little bit more value in the dog is go get it obedience trained. If you can house train it you know, yourself, fine, that's good. But get it some kind of obedience training so you can say this is a house dog too. Already the value just went up because the American Bully already has a good temperament. If you can give it a little bit of obedience training, then the people will already take up the value. Because if you bought it for a breed stock, you bought it at a certain price. And now you sell it at a pet quality, that's a, that's a lower price. So already you lost money. So I'm trying to help you build some of that money back. The first thing to do, go get an obedience train and it'll give it a little bit back. If you don't know how to do it, you can go to PetSmart. They got classes over there and they can do all kind of obedience training. Um, to go a little further, you can go and get the dog service dog trained. Uh, and then the value is way up. And like I say, it's and it's already a pretty nice looking dog anyway if it's a bully. So it's very attractive compared to the other service dogs if you go and get this done. And the bully has got a great temperament in it. So it'll be able, it wants to please the owner is what I'm saying. So it'll, it'll take to that training good and it'll be a great companion dog. So if you get the dog with too many flaws in it, you understand you're not gonna be able to breed it, go get it fixed and then go get it some training and you may be able to resell it at a decent price at a rehome, as a rehoming fee. And even if you decide to keep the dog, that's a good thing to have spayed and neutered, uh, house trained and obedient. That means that you can keep it in the house away from the other dogs on your, on your yard. You ain't gotta worry about nobody on, on the yard impregnating the dog. So it's all that, that has to be done. Get the dog spayed and neutered, try to get it some obedience training to up the value in the dog a little bit. Hey, don't forget to hit that uh, like button, hit the notification bell, and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to do that. Now, even if you decide, well, I can't sell the dog, I really don't have time for this, I just want to cut my losses and go. Um, you can go and give it to somebody. Or you maybe go give it to a family member, a friend of yours that like these dogs anyway, give it to him. But that's why I said in the beginning, get it spayed and neutered now. Because you go give it to your cousin and he gonna tell him everything that I just told you and show as you born, like my grandma said, he gonna go get that dog bred. Show as you born, the, the, the German Shepherd Poodle down the street is gonna breed to this daggone dog. That's gonna happen. He gonna sell him his half bullet puppies. <laughs> that's, gonna, that's gonna happen. So that's why I said in the beginning, go get the dog spayed or neutered, neutered right now and then decide what you're gonna do next. Now, the reason I lean toward rehoming is because you have a certain amount of area. You know, you know, just like if you had a, a, a plant nursery and you had room for six plants, if one of them is not good enough to hold and produce the fruit that you need to keep this sustained, you have to get rid of that plant and put another one in its place that can sustain what you're trying to do. Um, and that's, I'm saying that to say you cannot sit here with this dog that you might be in love with now. Maybe you just is a great dog now. But you got to get make room for what you need in your program. You cannot sit here for three or four generations trying to do this. It's not going to make no sense. Three or four generations trying to make a dog with a bunch of flaws work. So you have to cut your loss. That's why, that's why I'm steering you towards rehoming the dog. But I'm steering you towards rehoming it in a good way. Um, another way to quick put some value in is get the dog's ears cropped. People don't want to hear it, but I'm telling you, you and that, you're not gonna go to the dog pound and find no dog in there with his ears cropped. 
that costs money. Some of these places charge you twelve hundred dollars nowadays. I mean, you can find a decent place, but some of these places will charge you twelve hundred dollars nowadays because they don't want to do it. So, you, you know, any dog with his ears cropped, anybody will pick it up. So, just with it being a bully, if you go get his ears cropped, go get some obedience training, you up the value in the dog, and you'll be able to sell it a little bit better and a rehoming fee. If you don't get it fixed, the first thing is you run a list, of, uh, you run a, a risk of having a litter of dogs that have more flaws than the dog that you had, or, or the same as the dog that you had. Either way, it's gonna be hard to sell those puppies. Uh, it's gonna be hard to sell those puppies either way because it's hard to sell American Bully puppies either way. If you, if you started out with two good puppies and did everything right, it's hard to sell them, it's a certain market. So, if you, if you have those, if you go ahead and get this dog bred, you're not going to have anything that's going to be good enough for you to sell at a good price. And if you are able to sell them at a good price, the people are not going to be satisfied. I'm going to be over here telling them the whole time, get you some hard cut. I'm going to be telling them not to get the dog that you got. I'm going to be telling them the whole time, look for this, look for that, look for that. Check out this series. You can go and check out how to spot American Bully flaws. I'm going to be telling them, look for Cowhide, look for Stiff Stifle. You know, I'm gonna be telling them what to get to not buy your pup. So what I end up happening is you're gonna end up stuck with a litter of bad dogs. Well, you could've just cut your loss. Now, another way is, if myself, if I go and buy a, a dog from a breeder, nine times out of 10, I've had a lot of conversations for them with a, before I even went there, and we discussed that I'm trying to breed dogs and I'm trying to breed this specific type specific type of American bully. I'm not just breeding any American bully. I'm trying to do this, 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 and this. So he knows what I'm trying to do and he should steer me in that direction in his kennel. Now, six or seven months down the line, I get the dog and it turns out the dog can't breed at all. I got the right to go back to him. Hey man, this is not what we discussed. You know what I was trying to do and you just set me back a year. Now he can do one or two things at that point. He can say, well, just bring the dog back, man. I'll, I'll give you the next dog out of my litter. Here, here's another dog you can get. He'd give you a better pick than you had the first time. So you had a third pick. He said, man, bring me that dog back. I'll give you a second pick out of the litter this time. Or he could say, well, man, um, <clears throat> just keep the dog. I'll give you a real good price on the next dog you buy from. You know, you can do something to litigate what y'all went through. If he's a respectable breeder and you are a respectable breeder, what you're trying to be, because that's what we have to keep going in the business. If you go back to him, nine times out of ten, something to happen. Now, if you are a better salesman than I, you may be able to sell these dogs and, 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 and make some decent money with them. All flaws and all, because this this Merle color, you can breed a, a dog with a bunch of flaws to a Merle dog and get the Merle color and people still buy it. But you are not going to be hard cut. You're not going to be at the level. You cannot sell your dogs at the level I'm selling my dogs at. If you sell those dogs at that level, they're going to hold you accountable to that level. And I'm held accountable everywhere, all day long, day and night. I stay held accountable. So if you're going to be uh, selling the dogs at my level, you're going to be held accountable at my level. You're not going to be able to sustain that with the dogs you got because the dogs that you sold them is not going to be any good. And when they get back to your place, you ain't going to be able to show many dogs at your place that's any good. So you're not even going to be able to barter to them about, well, you can get the next, they don't want no more dogs from you. <laughs> yeah. So that's, no, that's the next reason. Now, why did you get stuck with this type of dog in the first place? Because you had two opportunities in this process to not let this happen. Um, first thing is you went and put a deposit on the dog. Nine times that, if you didn't go put a deposit on the dog, if you spent $500 altogether for the dog, that's already the first red flag, and you should already know. Like my dog, that's, that's a red flag, you should already know. You ain't at the right level. You didn't put a deposit down and, and it didn't take any, then you're at the wrong level. So, 
if you went and you put the deposit down on the dog like you should have, you should have been have already checked out the parents, you should have already checked out the breeder, past productions, you should have uh, been able to look at the dog right then and seen if anything was out of place. If, if none of that happened, that was the first opportunity you put the deposit down, you, you out. Now, after that, the dog sit there at least four to six weeks, depending on when you put the deposit down, the dog sit there another four to six weeks. And then when you, and you should have been getting pictures the whole time. The whole four to six weeks, you should have been getting pictures and video if you're not capable of going over there. You should have been getting pictures and video after you don't put this deposit down. All of them pictures, you didn't, you didn't have no problem. Okay, so now you get the dog, you ready to go and pick the dog up. You go and pick the dog up and pay the rest of your money. When you get ready to pay the rest of your money, you got to see the dog at about eight to nine weeks old and you got to see if anything is out of place. And you still gave him money and went on and went on. So that was actually three opportunities you had to not make this decision. So the reason you made this decision is one of three reasons. Either you are ignorant, you don't understand how to pick a good pup. If so, I got a whole series here, how to pick the best pup. Two, you don't know how to recognize flaws if you did know. I got a whole series here, how to recognize flaws, so you know how to do that. Or three, which is most likely, you just was caught up in the moment, wanted to bully, an opportunity came up down the street or somewhere, and you bought this pup. But when you do that, you can't expect the same thing you can from hard cut. If you went to the flea market and bought the dog for $1,200 from the flea market, the dude is gone. He might be in another state tomorrow. It'll cost him $35 to set up that flea market tent and, and get you to buy them puppies. $35. So he's gone after that. Me, I'm worldwide. People know me all, Ho Chi Minh City. Serbia, Filsec, Germany, everybody understands hard cut. They, they, they know where to get me. I'm very accessible. That is another price put on it. Don't try to charge what I'm charging if you're not that accessible. If you're not, if you can't hold up when you do get access. When you, when you do reach me, I will have all the dogs to prove what I'm saying. I'm gonna have all the situations I need to have to get out of any situation because I'm legitimate. If you're not that, you're not going to be able to survive, even if you're a better salesman than I am. So, to cut your losses, go get the dog spayed or neutered now, and try to get it uh, rehomed as a pet. Hey, if you ain't did it yet, go to the website, man, get you something hard cut, man. You know what I'm saying? Hit the, hit the link right here, and hey, check out this video, I'm going to be over there waiting on you, man. Hey, and get you something hard cut. It's on. Oh,